Welcome back to my channel, Houseplant Apothecary. Today I decided to go on a little field trip down to Ohio to my two favorite nurseries, Baker's Acres and Groovy Plant Nursery. I found a lot of really cool stuff and I hope you'll tune in today's episode to check out what I got. shot were all from Baker's Acres. So we're going to start with that greenhouse first. There's plants in front of me and behind me. The nice thing that I like about going to an actual greenhouse is that you get to pick the plants that you want. And even if there's more than one, you get to pick the nicest or best plants, which is not always an option if you aren't doing mail order. So to start out with, I'm going to come around front and this way the camera will zoom in, but we're going to start with begonias. Um, this is a really cool begonia, and for those of you that grow begonias, uh, when I first saw this I thought it was begonia seismoria. It has beautiful uh, purple backing to the leaves, and then this is not even a full-grown plant. Um, the Seismoria species gets uh, leaves that are probably 12 inches long and makes it a really nice specimen plant. This is actually not Seismoria, however. It's called Old Blue. And I uh, really was uh, surprised by this because it has the beautiful, I don't know if you guys can see this, but Seismoria has these really interesting hairs on the surface of the leaf. And that's what makes it so interesting, along with this big silver um, center part. But uh, the lady was explaining to me that this is not Seismoria, it's a, it's a hybrid, um, but it is much easier to grow. The next begonia is in, in a series that's one of my favorites, and these are um, considered upright rhizomatous begonias. And they uh, have these big finger-like shield leaves, and they come in a, a lot of different colors. Um, this one's called Little Brother Montgomery. And you don't see these very often, but they grow into a really nice specimen plant. Um, the thing I love about bakers is they grow their plants exceptionally well and their staff are extremely friendly. The next begonia, and what I'll actually do for this one is I'll throw up a picture of one of the plants that I took at the greenhouse. This one's called Sophie Cecil. And the little splashing on the leaves here, uh, when it's grown in high light, is a brilliant pink. This plant isn't showing that prior probably because it was grown in, in a little bit less light. But it's uh, very showy, and uh, this one's considered a cane begonia. The back of the leaves are purple and quite showy. Uh, this begonia, I will also throw up a picture. Uh, this one is called Red Fred, and this thing gets monstrous. This thing is not even half grown. The leaves get twice to three times the size of this one. And as you can see from my hand, this plant is already huge. The other thing too is the leaves get a deep tomato red when they are grown in full sun. And the backs of the leaves are also that same stupendous color. Really, really cool plant. Um, Glass House is, I think, one of the only other places that I've seen that has this plant, but probably literally one of the biggest begonias you can grow. Alright, the next begonia is really super cool, and it's this one. Now, when I first saw this begonia, it reminded me of another begonia that I've grown. The begonia that I'm thinking is begonia venosa. And that's actually a silvery leafed begonia, whereas this one 
uh, isn't as silvery. Um, the back of the leaves have a red coloration. And you can see the considerable amount of pubescence on the leaves, um, which makes them really attractive. The new leaf is exceptionally hairy. And this is a big plant. Um, I'll throw up a picture of the uh, a bigger plant they had for sale, um, but quite honestly, I didn't have room for the specimen size plant they had at the greenhouse, so this one will do. Um, this one is a really cool begonia, and these some of these rhizomatous begonias when they're younger don't show very well. Um, but I'll show a picture of this plant, um, a mature plant of this, and you will be really amazed because it gets these irregular kind of uh, calico markings on the leaf that are um, irregular dark gray and then the, the lighter silver. Um, so this is gonna be a really fun one to grow out. And again, this is a rhizomatous begonia. This is another rhizomatous begonia that one of the staff there convinced me to purchase. Uh, they do a lot of their own hybridization there, and this one's called UTH1. And this was a seedling they selected from uh, plants that grow out. So the lady said that the leaves get really dark, almost black, and then they get this like kind of a chartreuse. Uh, color modeling through the center and it's this kind of uh, star-shaped uh, five-lobed leaf uh, plant and then again I always like looking at kind of the multi effect of the back of the leaf and then the front of the leaf because you can get you can get a lot of appreciation from both the other thing too is uh, this has really hairy uh, stems and when it, this grows out, it makes it even more attractive. So the next two plants, actually, we'll go with this geranium next. So this is my all-time favorite begonia. It's been around for quite a long time. And this cultivar is called Henry Cox. This looks at first kind of like a zonal geranium, and I guess for all intents and purposes it is. But it has the most stunning splashes of orange and yellow and um, kind of a purplish overlay. And it's just a really stunning plant. The flowers are pink and it makes a wonderful house plant in the wintertime. I bring these in. Uh, I already have one, but I wanted to get another one. So if you have never grown this, this geranium, and I know some people don't like geraniums. I, I never was a huge fan until I saw this one. This one's definitely uh, a must to grow. Uh, now we'll go on to, some people think this is a Tradescantia, but this is actually a Calicia repens. And the cultivar is uh, Bianca. And this one just has such beautiful uh, pink, variegation. Uh, it's fairly stable, although with something like this, you will want to kind of watch the amount of green because uh, these do tend, things like this tend to just revert. So don't ever, you know, select just the pure pink foliage because that doesn't actually provide the plant any food. You want a mixture. This plant shows a repre perfect representation of how it should look. A mixture of some green leaves with the striping, some pure variegation, um, some of the pure pink leaves, and then some areas that are more strongly pink than others. Uh, this is a Tradescantia, and this one's called Trailing Gold. Uh, I actually saw this on Steve's Leaves website, and uh, I saw this at the nursery and so uh, they actually um, had some smaller plants that I could purchase. So these things grow very quickly and I was told by the greenhouse that this chartreuse 
variety uh, does not tolerate high light. They actually need a little bit of protection and shade because the chartreuse foliage actually will burn and scorch if given too much light. So really excited to try this. I've actually seen this in a couple different nurseries lately, but they were in really large hanging baskets. All right. One of my other plants, really favorite plants, is Pileas. They come in a large array of different shapes, sizes, and colors. Obviously, Pilea peppermoides is really popular and hot right now. Um, but this uh, Pilea silver cloud is just stunning. And I know the camera can't really pick up the effect, but the leaves truly uh, sparkle and shimmer in the light. And uh, I decided I just uh, needed to try this one out. So, very, very cool plant. I also picked up another Pilea, and this one's called Grandifolia Coral. I mainly got this one because the texture of the leaves is so stunning. These corrugated, puckered leaves really adds a lot of interest. Um, in good light, though, I'm assuming uh, the edges of the leaves, if you can see, uh, are kind of a coral or a reddish pink color. So I'm assuming in an optimal light or good light, this gets even more intense and, and adds more interest to this plant. All right, one of my favorite groups of plants is pepper, Peperomias. And actually I had lost this plant, so I'm glad I went there because uh, this is Baker's Acres is one of the few places that I know that carries Peperomia Fra Fraseriae nana and I will throw up a picture of the flower inflorescence but they are really interesting they kind of look like toilet brush scrub scrubbers and uh, I'm not sure why this isn't more widely grown I, the foliage is really not terribly attractive although they have these really attractive red stems but I've got to tell you when this thing starts to flower it, it really catches your eye so they were actually out of a couple plants because they they originally had their opening day on Saturday and I had something I had to attend and couldn't make it so I came on Sunday today and things were a little picked over so I've actually been going there for years and they kind of allowed me to go into their production greenhouse. And while I was in there, I saw this monster. Now what this is, is Peperomia rugosa. And I actually have this plant already. But what blew my mind is the size of this plant. I mean, I'm holding it parallel to me and you can just see how monstrous this thing is. Now, when I got to talking to the lady, they have a stock plant. And their stock plant is as big as the one I have. This is my plant. And I said to her, well, my plant doesn't get this big and this, it's full grown. And she says, you're right. She goes, our stock plant uh, is over here and it, it was exactly the same size as this plant right here. So if I hold these side by side, you can really see the difference. She said when they started to propagate this one that the propagation material got this big. So she doesn't know if it mutated slightly or what. But I think this is just fantastic. Like, how cool is that? So I will be propagating and experimenting with this plant, but I'm really excited. They only had six pots of this and they were not on the out in the greenhouse so yeah what i'm saying is that it pays to ask okay so what i'm going to show you next is um this is a whale fin sansevieria they're very popular right now but the really cool thing about this and the ironic thing is that i actually was obsessed and loved this plant before it ever became widely popular. Um, I bought another one today at Baker's Acres just because the price was pretty good. Um, 
But I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the plant that I've had um, since college because I actually had seen this plant in our botany collection at, at the university when I was working there. And nobody ever thought the Sansevieria was all that interesting because I was used to seeing the typical Sansevieria cultivars that were in big box stores and I never ever saw this one and I thought it was the most stunning plant. So just give me a second and I'm going to go ahead and show you the big plant that I have. So you can see here this is a plant I've had probably now for 10, 12 years. And I've got to tell you, when I originally dug this plant up, a sucker up, and grew it, uh, nobody was growing these. Nobody even cared about this variety or this species. So, you know, my channel is all about talking about new varieties, but you know, showing people that a lot of the stuff that's becoming popular today has been around for a really long time and has been largely ignored. All right, now to the plants hanging to the back. Now, I have a couple Scandopsis, um, the, but I wanted uh, one that trailed down a lot more. So as you can see, um, I found one today. And the price was right too. Um, so this one probably hangs down four feet. And uh, I just love these when they grow out. Um, but like I said, the, the ones that I had, they, they're not nearly as big as this and they do grow quite slowly. So I was very happy to find this plant. The next plant is the um, Senecchio radicans fish hooks. And I've seen this plant kind of off and on recently, but uh, you know, I kind of, let me take it around so that you guys can get a good look. But uh, yeah, I've seen this plant around and I, I finally, this plant was well grown, good price on it, and so I thought, what the heck, I'll, I'll try it. I have a really big string of pearls, and that's done very well. So I uh, kind of like that the new growth, if you can see on the camera, the new growth has um, is kind of purple or lavender in color, just, just slightly. So it kind of adds a, a different level of interest. Now I'm going to come around and I'll grab the last plant that I had to show you from Baker's. And I got to tell you, this plant made my day. So this is Ripsalidopsis, or Ripsalis, sorry, Paradoxa. And I gotta tell you, this plant has the most amazing texture. Uh, this basket was 20 bucks. And I mean, look at how long this sucker is. I mean, this has gotta be a five year old plant. And they had probably seven or eight of these, but again, they weren't out in the sale floor. These were back in the greenhouse. So, by me asking and making friends, I got one of my dream plants because um, I've been looking for a decent sized plant and all I can find online is small cuttings or, or just small rooted plants. And now I have a beautiful plant to hang up in my hallway and I'm just really excited. Ripsalis are such an easy plant to grow. They uh, can tolerate low light. Although this plant, if you can see, the more light they get, the more red and beautiful they get because essentially it's a defense mechanism to protect the plant. But uh, you know, if you don't have a lot of light, you can definitely be successful growing this plant. They like to dry out between waterings and you know, I just can't get over this. 
So there you have it. These were the plants that I got from Baker's Acres. Next, we're going to check out the plants that I got from Groovy Plant Nursery. Here are the plants that I got from Groovy Plant Nursery. They uh, specialize in succulents primarily, uh, but they also have house plants and they do a really good job of bringing in really unusual and unique plants. You can find some pretty rare things there and I just love going there. They also uh, produce a lot of perennials and annuals uh, later in the season, but for me, you know, right now with it being early, I was going there just for house plants. So I'm going to come around so I can hold plants up as I talk about them. The first one is a plant that I've not grown before and it is really cool. The texture on the tips of the leaves kind of look like you know, like a toad skin, slightly warty, but this is uh, Titanopsis calcarea, and it's a very interesting succulent. So I'm gonna have fun trying this. And uh, again, if you guys know anything about some of the plants that I'm not as familiar with, uh, definitely. Uh, comment below. Uh, I'd love to hear how you grow things. So one of the plants that I actually never thought I would actually um, find is this Peperomia here. And this cute little guy is called Peperomia uh, Columb columbilia. Oh, sorry. Columella. And I'm assuming basically because the it grows in a columnar fashion. Uh, this is a really rare Peperomia. I've only ever seen it being offered by Asian vendors and I didn't really feel like taking the risk of having it confiscated or packaged poorly and die. So I was extremely happy to have finally found this plant and that really has kind of um, getting kind of toward the end of what possibilities I, I have as far as adding peperomias to my collection. Uh, none other plant, and this is a, another Ripsalis, is, uh, it's called a ram, Ramulosa, and these are just extraordinary plants. They've become extremely popular in the last few years, and I think it's just because of their ease of care, but again, this one has when they're mature it produces like a beautiful kind of weeping habit and again just like the other one the more light you give it the more red the leaves are so I'm probably gonna hang these up in under in a tree during the summertime so that they really grow quickly um, and get a lot of color on them and then hang them up in a bright window during the winter time so Definitely try and find this one. It's a really cool one. Uh, this is a Senecio variegated string of tears or Senecio rollianus. And I, I had this plant before, but I, I gave it away as a gift. Um, but this one had just really nice variegation. And as you can see, if you can see in this uh, shot, there's a kind of a pink and purple uh, marbling in the variegation as well. So a really nice plant. I'm going to try and grow this kind of into a specimen. Um, Senecios are really popular and to not like be like everyone else. I am um, kind of picky about which ones I've been buying, but I, I just couldn't help myself when I saw this one. This one is uh, called the Watermelon uh, Senecchio. And I don't know if you can pick up the, the little watermelon stripes on the, the leaves, but uh, they're quite prominent and the, the beads are quite big on this one. And the uh, species is, um, this is a, again another Senecchio, um, Hirianus, 
And I guess this one's a pretty uncommon one. Um, I guess, to be honest, I, I haven't, hadn't really seen this before either. So comment below if you have this plant. I'm just curious how many people are, are growing this right now. All right, and I know the last Senecchio for, for the day. Um, other than my string of pearls, today I've probably added the, uh, I've added a lot of Senecchios to my collection. Well, I guess I'm collecting them now. Uh, this one is the string of dolphins. Uh, I knew they had these because they were advertising them on their Facebook, which by the way, they do have an online market that you can order and mail order some of their plants. Um, but to get the best selection of plants, you, you kind of have to drive there. Um, but again, Ohio is really worthwhile coming to visit to go, go do a plant trip because there's so many uh, greenhouses in the area that are worthwhile going to besides just Baker's Acres and Groovy Plant Nursery. Um, some other ones that you could go to is Glasshouse Works down in Stewart, Ohio. And a lot of the Oak Lawn uh, stores, greenhouses, uh, have a really good selection of tropical indoor house plants. So, yeah, I think this plant is pretty nice looking and I'm excited to grow this. So apparently this is pretty rare. Not a lot of people have this. Uh, this one is a succulent oxalis. And I actually have another succulent oxalis and I thought that this was a different species. I guess I should have looked at the tag. Just because the way that this one is growing is so much more succulent Maybe perhaps uh, the way I'm growing it with a little bit more moisture is creating a situation where it it doesn't have to store as much in the leaves. But I'm going to hold on to this one and just see if this growth habit is consistent or if it ends up growing out more like the one I have if I give it more water. Another peperomia that I was kind of hunting around for is this one, and this one's called Trailing Jade. I have another one that's called, also called Trailing Jade, but the leaves are more round and short. As you can see on this one, the, they're quite uh, long, and the other one only has leaves in groups of three, whereas I noticed this produces leaves in whorls of five at times. So, again, another really cool peperomia to add to the collection. And I will probably do uh, another peperomia um, collection tour because I've added so many new peperomias to my collection. Um, so stay tuned for that at some point. Now, these were kind of interesting. I've, I've had these as houseplants before, and I've called them like leopard leopard lilies, um, but they're a uh, Lutaburia, uh, and this one is called um, Passiflora, and th this one has real, like, subtle speckling on the leaves, and they get these really cute little flowers that almost look like a grape hyacinth. Um, so I, I picked up this one, and then this new, this other one too, um, called uh, Letiburia uh, Gary Hammer is the cultivar. And I actually really thought this one was stunning because it has these really long strap-like leaves with uh, really prominent markings on the foliage. So. A little bit different spin on the ones that you you typically see and this one's flowering right now too the flowers are pretty interesting they're green uh, and then the anthers the anther stems are uh, bright fuchsia I don't know if you can uh, if the camera is really picking that up 
but very cool. And then basically I have one last plant. It's not the most interesting plant, but uh, I kind of been looking for this and it was, uh, I thought a pretty good deal for how full and compact this plant is. So this is, uh, you know, a snake plant, but this variety has the real dark green interior of the leaf with the gold on the edge. And so I've been kind of casually collecting Sansevierias and this, this variety um, was one I didn't have. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and enjoyed the plants uh, that I got today. I really encourage you to go out and visit uh, greenhouses from out of state. Anytime I'm traveling or going to visit friends, I like to hit up a greenhouse that's local uh, because you can find really interesting plants that are not on the market, they're not online, and you can get beautiful large specimen plants that you just couldn't simply get shipped to you. So thank you again for joining me on today's episode of my plant haul, out of state plant haul, and I hope that you tune in to future episodes because uh, I'm always buying cool plants. Thanks.